Hi. Before I get started, I'd like to introduce myself using the Callum Gunn pronunciation of my moniker. <clears throat> Hi. I'm Kien Duham, and this is a Title Cycles tutorial on how to create stuttered patterns. Hope you enjoy. Hi. In this video, I'm going to talk about three different title cycles functions that are all kind of related. The first is stut, the second is stut prime, and the third is off. And uh, I wasn't even familiar with off until a few weeks ago. It's pretty cool. So these functions are all similar in that they, they add new notes to be played after your original pattern based on some time or timing, um, kind of like a delay effect. So anyway, let's just start with this basic pattern I've got here, this bass drum pattern. And I'm gonna copy it up and we're gonna start with stut. So stut is kind of like a basic delay, but it's, it's not a delay effect. What it does is it actually adds new notes into your pattern uh, before it even gets sent to uh, super dirt or classic dirt, depending on what you're using. So it will actually modify your your pattern. And it accepts three parameters, X, Y, and Z here, uh, which I will explain and change in a second. So the first parameter is the number of, or yeah, the number of notes you want played. So if I say one, that will actually have no effect at all. It will play the original note. If I say two, it will play the original original note and then a stuttered value after. And three, it'll play the original note and then two stuttered values after, and so on. I'm just gonna set it to two. Y is the volume or feedback level uh, between, it's a value between zero and one. I'm just gonna set it to 0 0.5, kind of in the middle. And then the last parameter is the uh, the time. For stut, it's the amount of time that you want all of the stuttered values to um, kind of the amount of time you want them all squished up into. So in this case, I'm going to have two values played within a quarter of a cycle. So this time value is in units of cycles. So in this case, 0 0.25 is a quarter of a cycle. So I'm going to have the original note played in the pattern plus a stuttered value at half the volume uh, a quarter of a cycle later. And uh, it's our original pattern, again, sounds like this. And the stut value sounds like this. And of course, we can modify th these values as we like, as it plays, or, or just to experiment. Uh, we can play with the time, play with the number of stuttered values, and see what it does. Kind of cool. And of course, you can get as extreme as you want. We can uh, you know, add a ton, you know, in this case, 31 stuttered values after the original uh, in a you know, very short amount of time or a very long amount of time. You can actually get some interesting rhythmic, rhythmic things going on with that. But again, the key thing is that this is not a um, delay effect. It's actually adding samples into the pattern. And this is evident when you reverse the pattern because now it's actually going to reverse the, the um, samples that have a, a diminished volume. It's going to reverse that so that it increases in volume. Pretty cool. All right, so Stut Prime is like Stut's older sibling. Uh, it's a little more flexible and powerful. So if we take our original pattern here, and so Stut Prime also accepts three parameters. 
Uh, the first, again, is a stuttered uh, number, but it's different. It's not consistent with the original stut function. So this is maybe an area of opportunity to improve the, the title code. Um, but as it is today, uh, stut1 will add one stuttered value after the original. So you don't have to specify two to get the original to play and then the stuttered value to play. If we just specify a one, it will play the original and, and one stuttered value. Uh, I'll just keep it at one there. Uh, y is, again, um, similar to the time value here. It's um, the value between stuttered values. So up here the st with the original stut, the time is the time in which all stuttered values will be squished into. Here with stut prime, it's the time between stuttered values. So let's keep that in mind. So I'm just going to set it to an eighth of a cycle there. And then the last is a function that we want to apply to every stuttered value. And this is where it gets really powerful. If we want to do a simple um, you know, delay or a, a delay type effect similar to stut, we could multiply the gain by 0 0.8 or some value here. And uh, anyway, again, here's our original pattern. And now here is that pattern with one stuttered note, an eighth of a cycle later at where that stuttered value has a, a lower gain. So it's very similar when you add a when you use a gain function here. It's very similar to the uh, the basic stut function, and of course we can play with this. We can add more notes in. We can change the time. We can uh, make this even shorter. But what's really cool is is more of what we can do inside of this function here. So instead of gain we could actually work with speed and change the playback speed on every stuttered value. So now we should hear an increase in the pitch or the playback speed of each stuttered sample. Um, yeah, and so since this will accept this, this will accept more than just one function too. We can even put multiple functions inside of these braces. Um, so we could do speed two, we could even change the panning and add a little bit to the pan value every time. So now we should have a little bit of a stereo effect. So again inside of the outer braces we're just combining two different two functions here with the with the dot. Kind of cool. And we can even put some patterning inside of here too. So instead of just the, um, let me get my braces back to where they should be. So instead of just a, uh, you know, multiply, multiplying speed by two on each stuttered value, we can even put a more complex thing in here where we could choose between, um, you know, randomly choose between a number of values. So in this case, I'm going to multiply each stuttered value by some random, randomly picked value by from this list here. So we get a random pitch on every stuttered note, which is honestly until tonight I'd never even tried that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you can kind of put whatever you want in there. You can even do logic like. Um, you know, stuff like this, where, you know, every two, you could do some crazy stuff like that. I don't know if this will have much of an effect, but I guess it does. Yeah, that's kind of neat. So you can put some more complex patterns in there. So your, your stut prime function is really powerful with that, that third parameter of, of, a, of a function. And let me put a new line in there. Okay. All right. The last is off, which... After showing step prime, I think off is kind of a little bit uninteresting, but um, it's like a shortcut for stut prime one. So if we do a stut prime, like up here, I've got a um, stut prime five. If 
I do stud prime one, that's that's the same as uh, what off is going to do. So we do off, not oof, off, and then a time. I don't know why I choose those braces there. A time and then a function to apply. So off is, again is is like doing stud prime one. I just don't have to type the one. So off and then a time. So what this is going to do is it's going to create an offset or a second stuttered value at this time and apply this function to that stuttered value. So pretty basic. It's like a lot more basic uh, version of stud prime. Um, kind of a shortcut. If you just want one stuttered value, use that off, which I think is kind of short for offset to create an offset uh, sound after. All right, so that's all I wanted to show. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting and um, I know I sure enjoy using the, the stut functions for a lot of weird rhythmic behavior. Maybe you will too. So that's all. Thanks. Kien du hum. Kien du hum. <laughs>